Okay. Uh, should I hit uh, your recording? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. And like, sorry for, again, sorry for not showing up. I've been sick. I've been taking paracetamols, um, but I'll do my best to be interactive, as Filippo said. Filippo said, you know, instead of Zoom meetings, we meet physically, but now here, here we are again. Um, so I am going to uh, start. So the, the initial morning, so this morning is, is meant to be an introduction to SMC. And, and the best way to do it is doing via particle filters, because it is the most intuitive algorithm, uh, and it's the most well-known algorithm of the SMC family. So what what I'm going to start with is, let's say it's SMC masterclass. Um, and I'm going to start with <clears throat> an introduction to particle filter, right? Um, and this is going to basically be, um, I'm going to, going to start explaining if you receive the lecture notes, uh, you, can, you can see from there that I'm going to start from state space models, right? Because these are the core class of models we will be interested in. And then I will go on deriving um, uh, the particle filter basically as an important sampler. Uh, I, I believe many of you know what important sampling is. Um, uh, it is like simple, simple enough algorithm. Uh, I'm going to take the perspective that particle filter is, is essentially an important sampler, but on, a, on, a, on an extended space. So we'll derive the particle filter as a sole important sampler uh, on this you know, extended space or for the state space models. And then um, I'm going to explain uh, some of the variations of the algorithm and, and the help hopefully more intuition behind the algorithm. And that must be the, that must be the first morning. And then um, Alice will um, lead the pro, um, practicals for this. Right? So the class of models we will be interested in are, are called state space models, right? So um, state space models are usually, you know, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the, with the kind of the marker model right um, this kind of the marker model these are also called state space models if the xt and yt are continuous um, so we will be interested in this sort of conditional independence structure right so we have like a state process we call xt um, xt is called state or signal process signal process let's call it and this is usually something you are interested in. So this would be, I don't know, an object, a location and velocities and positions of an object you want to track. This could be a physical process. You want to estimate the state. Um, so it's usually called the state of the system as well, right? Uh, let's call it state process as well. <clears throat> so um, that's why the, this sort of problem is also called state estimation, because what people want to do is given observations, YTs, right? YTs are called observations or observation process. Um, given observations, uh, you may want to estimate XT. So one of the one of the classical setups in this sort of models is that you typically assume that YTs are observed, so they are given, and XTs are unobserved, and you want to usually reconstruct XTs from YTs, right? This is one of the standard problems. And how this model is formalized or defined uh, in a in a more precise way, we have basically three distributions. Right, we define a prior or x0. This is our initial state. Uh, we have uh, a transition model, right? And, and here, the transition model, I assume it's time independent, but um, it could be time dependent. So you could have a t index here, right? But I'm, for the simplicity, I'm not going to do that. Um, and then you will, have, you will have a likelihood, which is an observation model. <coughs> OK. So what kind of, um, I mean, many of you must might be familiar, but just to give more intuition, what kind of scenario this could describe. So let's say XT is uh, locations and velocities of an object. Let's say it's moving around, right? So XT could be a four dimensional vector that represents an object in 2D, right? And uh, let's say, just consider the scenario of your cell phone estimating your location in like the Google Maps, Google Maps scenario, where uh, your location is like a dot on a map, right? Um, but your, your observations, the, the actual observations, whatever the uh, estimator receives in this case would be your GPS signal or with some other power signal that goes from your phone, right? So what happens in that scenario, for example, is that your observations are received in a receiver and they are converted via a complicated likelihood and maybe pro probably your model of your movement, they, they, are, they are converted into state estimations, state estimates, which are like your location. Uh, in this case, right? So it's a very, tracking is a very, very uh, standard example. 
you can have a lot of uh, physical processes you want to track for example this could the x axis could be the state of the weather right it, it could be the velocity field it could be some sort of physical process and your observations might be coming from a, a sparsely distributed array of sensors right over space and what you would want to do in that scenario for example you would want to construct a physical process xt from your you know yt that are observations coming from sensors okay so one of the problems now how do we formalize so how so this is a given model right and then we can ask questions to the model so one of the questions you could ask to this model uh, for example is uh, let's try to do I don't know, some sections maybe if it's going to make sense so um so one of the problems or one of the questions you can ask to this model is filtering right so what is filtering so filtering problem or filtering uh, the filtering problem is basically uh, uh, estimating the distribution of the latest state uh, xt given the the whole sequence of observations you have received so far and doing this in a in a recursive fashion hopefully so the distribution here would be um, probability of or the probability distribution of xt given y1 to t and this is what we call filtering distribution, right? So, so far I haven't mentioned any of sampling or any of the notions of important sampling or SMC. This is just a, a you know a probabilistic model we are given, and we would like to ask questions to the probabilistic model. And and first question we will we will ask is, can we estimate filtering distribution? So these are. This would be typically a sequence of distributions you would want to estimate, right? And uh, these would be uh, so. So one of the goals also, I mean, you could do this in multiple ways. One of the goals also would be if you do this, could we do this online? Online meaning, um, can I update? So given, let's say, can I update? Given an estimate of the previous distribution, can I actually go from here to here and update my filter? just the receiving uh, receiving the latest observation right receive yt and and update your filtering um, distribution okay so let's let's look how we do that so and note that if if you know how to do this right this is all you need because because uh, if you know an update rule from t minus one to t you are given the prior right um, so since you are given the prior, you will be basically, you, you will be able to do everything you want, right? You will start from prior, you keep updating your posterior distributions. So posterior here, meaning uh, the filtering distribution, right? Um, am I uh, leaving out an important bit? I mean, just please feel, feel free to ask any question if there's any convention or uh, terminology I'm using that you don't know. All right. So one way to do this, let's let's do the, the filtering updates, right? So let's try to write down a way to do this. So if you are given pi x t minus one, and you want to update basically to the pi t given x y, sorry pi t pi of x t given y one to t, um, there are two steps to it, right? So there are multiple ways to do this, but one intuitive way is you first perform what's called prediction. Um, so what what this would do is you would construct this predictive distribution, right? And this is an integral over um, your transition model using your transition model, obviously x t minus one and your you know what you know. This is what you know, right? So this 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 already we assume we had and. So what is what is this update doing? This update is basically pushing your probability measure through your transition kernel. Why this would make sense? Because you so why this would be called prediction, for example, because because so pi x t minus one. So this distribution denotes the probability measure over of the state at time t minus one, right? So it could be a location for a person of a person, for example, as we keep talking about. Uh, so this is your belief about where the person is, right? Or, or it's well, the, the probability distribution over their velocities. Um, so transition model describes how this object evolves, right? So this is the evolution model, basically. So this is this is basically the model um, 
again, this is the evolution model. So this is how what you assume that the, your object of interest that you want to estimate is moving in this state space, right? So this in in the, in the, in some in some sense you are taking your uh, prior belief here. This it's fair to say this acts as some sort of prior of t minus one. You push it through your transition kernel and you get a predictive distribution. Now this is the distribution of x t. So where you believe the object will be given one y one to t minus one, right? You haven't incorporated the latest operation yet. So this is what's called the predictive distribution, right? This is called the predictive measure. Uh, or distribution. And then the second step is updates. And obvious from the like name, it's the base update, right? So how would you update after you receive your observation, the latest observation? You basically use the predictive uh, distribution as prior, right? This is your prior. And then you use the likelihoods. You just write down the base updates. And okay. Uh, so this is G, sorry. And this is probability of YT given Y1 to T minus one. All right. Right. So what we did, so this is the filtering distribution again, right? Filtering distribution. So what we did again, uh, I'm going slowly. I mean, if I'm too slow, please let me know. But uh, so what what I'm what I, what we did here is basically describe a map from um, the distribution at time t minus one to distribution at time t, right? So I think uh, Francesca, when he, she explains the theory bit, she's gonna take a lot of this perspective of, you know, the, these are the maps over distributions, right? But at the moment, we are just like describing it as two-step procedure where we predict on the update. So how is this related to, um, okay, so one of the, one of the, now I think I don't have a continuous scroll here, so I have to probably, so like this, sorry, yeah. Okay, so how we how so we have we had like the um right we had the prediction um so let's let me write again this is the posterior probability distribution uh, this is prediction and this is the update right so one of the applications of this um update rules is that if you have done Kalman filtering and you know you implemented the Kalman filter, Kalman filter exactly implements these recursions, right? So if you are if you're so it's not uh, related to SMC, but let's say if you are given this sort of prior, if you are given uh, because Kalman filter is very well known um, uh, method that it's it's useful to say if you are given some sort of evolution, let's say a x t minus one q. And then if you are given a Gaussian likelihood as well, right? Uh, so a linear Gaussian likelihood. So if you have a state space model that's entirely described by these three Gaussians, then you can exactly implement these recursions. And these are gonna, th these are gonna correspond to common filter prediction and update rules, right? These are exactly what they are. Okay. So this is one way to do this. Um, so for, for SMC, this is, so this is basically the, the most intuitive way to update filtering distribution, right? SMC doesn't rely on this principle or particle filter because so there's, there's a different um, construction there. So the construction will be, okay, these are the updates of the latest distributions, right? Um, but, but we are also, we can also take the perspective and take, uh, write down all the updates in the path space. Meaning um, if you are given, so let's say another way to update. So this is the first way to update, right? Uh, but then we can go and update on the path space. Uh, it's a proper way to, proper way to name it. Um, we can also ask the question, okay, I just don't want to forget about my past, um, the whole sequence of distributions or the whole like, the belief over the whole state. Can we actually construct a way to do this, right? So this is a relevant question, but it's not the same question. So this is a relevant question is, is I have a distribution over the paths up to T minus one, given Y 
one to t minus one. And I want to build a procedure so that I can update my um, belief over the whole path. I can extend it to the, the latest point, right? So this is sort of, again, asking a similar question, but this updates the whole part of the distribution over the whole path. So how would you do this? So this is also sort of um, easy to easy to do. So let's let we know the unnormalized distribution. So I mean, this is like a posterior distribution of x zero to t, or well, a conditional distribution of x zero to t given y one to t, right? So let's denote this as um, so. Let's denote the unnormalized version of this. So I'm just writing the joint distribution. I, the gamma here denotes the um, uh, joint distribution. And I have the normalizing constant. So what did I do here? I used the base rule, right? Uh, this is just writing the joint over the um, marginal distribution. This is going to give you the conditional distribution, right? And <clears throat> how, then what would you do? So what is the conditional distribution now? So given the state space model, if we go back, and look at here. So what would be the condition distribution of the whole very of the, all of the variables you are seeing in the model? Um, so what would be joint distribution of all the variables you are seeing in the model? It's sort of obvious because it's given by the conditional independent structure, right? So if I wanted to write the, the joint distribution of everything, right? You would you would know that. I know that this is now. I know all the variables are, are basically uh, described or distributed according to this independent structure. Uh, this sort of, sorry, it's going to be new. The sort of independent structure would arise like this, right? T equals one or maybe K, let's say to T. And I have FK, FK minus one. And then I multiply it with like this. Right, so basically you decompose the whole joint distribution according to your independent structure. This would be the, the joint distribution, right? So we can use this here. Okay, what we can do is, let's change the colors. What we can do is we can basically write down um, this in terms of, is, as a recursion. So what you could do, you could do basically, you can write this up to T minus one. And the last bit would be one step of the transition kernel and one step of the likelihood. Uh, why this is true? Because this is exactly true from this. You can just write down this is sort of a recursion over like from T minus one to T. And then I can get this bit. So this, I sorted out this bit, right? This bit, sorry. And, and then I can, I can write down this normalizing constant as basically let me write it directly and I can. Right. So this is also trivially true because of all observations, uh, yeah, once excess are marginalized out, out, all observations are dependent. So it's any distribution that has this sort of joint distribution over one to T, you can decompose it in this way, right? You condition on the first T minus one variables. Uh, so it's the distribution of first t minus one variables and the distribution of the last one conditional on first t minus one variables. Okay, uh, you can only recognize that we can recover the previous joint distribution like this, right? So this was basically the definition. If you look at the above line, this is the basically the definition um, of the previous distribution over the path. Right, and then the last bit I have to take into account. So, if you wanted to update uh, not just the posterior distribution of xt as the Kalman filter does, and some of the other numerical, you know, filtering algorithm algorithms, so that they all so this ensemble Kalman filter, extended Kalman filter, they all rely on this sort of uh, two-step updates, right? Um, so these are just updating the latest state variable. Uh, but if you want to keep an uh, sort of an update rule over the whole path that you have observed so far, then you could use something like this this update, right? Um, this would give you an update of the entire distribution. Okay, so this is the bit uh, where I introduced the updates and the models. Uh, uh, please, you know, again, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them uh, before I move on to important sampling and so on. All right.
So what I am going to do now is um, I'm going to skip. So in the lecture notes, there is smoothing at this point, but I'm going to skip it. You know, if there is time, I'm going to introduce smoothing at the end. Uh, so I'm going to just describe now, uh, this is, you can see now it's completely unrelated to topics, right? I described the state space models and some update rules about updating the posterior distribution of XT and the entire path. But then I'm going to describe now just important sampling as like an orthogonal topic, right? And then we will connect them together to be of the particle filter. So let's introduce, I don't remember what was the section, maybe three or four, uh, it's not important anyway. So I'm gonna introduce now important sampling, right? And again, I'm introducing this from a simple, uh, you know, I'm gonna explain it in simple terms. I know that many of you already know what it is for, for people who are not doing uh, this sort of work. Uh, so basically important sampling is an, a, a methodology. It's not actually a sampling methodology as it sounds in some way. Um, it is, it is a, a way to estimate integrals, right? So if let's say you have um, a pi distribution, this is gonna be, this is gonna connect to our filtering distribution earlier later, but pi is just say a generic distribution, right? Pi of X. And then you have a test function that you want to estimate expectations with respect to. So, uh, so you, so with respect to pi of pi, right? So you want to estimate this expectation, let's say. And this is going to be denoted like this. So it is pi of phi, right? So this is the notation of an integral. Whenever you see this, I think Francesca will make heavy use of this kind of notation. Um, so this is basically the integral you want to compute, right? And uh, here, what could be an interesting, you know, test function, let's say like test functions are usually given uh, so the, in, in theory of SMC and so on, they are going to be usually bounded. So the only interesting example or more, most interesting example in that case is the indicator function. So this could be, for example, if this is an indicator function of a set A, right, an example, then this, so let's use some colors to not uh, keep things general. So if, for example, as an example, if this is indicator function, this is the probability of set A, right? So if you want to estimate the probability of a set using you know, important sampling, one of the things you would use as a test function would be an indicator function. Test function could be just identity, then it's going to be the mean of the distribution and so on. Uh, in that case, you have to be careful with the theory because it's not going to be bounded. Um, anyway, so let's introduce important sampling. Okay, so how would you how would you sample from such a so how would you estimate such an integral? Or there are many ways, it's a very big topic. Yeah, but one way to do is important sampling. And so in the, in the in important sampling approach, you basically write first your distribution as an unnormalized distribution, right? An unnormalized distribution in, in, in this case, it's just, uh, this is, you know, let's write it explicitly what Z is. It's an integral of the unnormalized measure, right? So basically it's just, uh, you have some numbers in a discrete way, you can think you have some numbers that are given by this and you normalize them in order to make probabilities, right? So in the discrete case, intuitively. Okay, so this is the continuous version of that. And um, the, the idea, basic idea of important sampling is as follows. So you basically construct, you write down your integral, right? You keep, you keep going on with, uh, well, let's write down, write it down explicitly, right? This is, this is, Okay, so this is just the same thing. I, I just use this relationship, right? Um, so, and then I, I, I basically, the trick is just multiply and divide trick, right? It's one of the oldest maybe ideas. You multiply with Q and divide with Q, any Q, right? This is Q is a probability distribution. You can do the same to the, to the normalizing, to the normalizing constant because you basically don't know what it is as well. So that needs to be estimated, right? So first of all, you may already think about some ideas you know, more related to research is some people use, for example, different proposal in the, uh, the numerator and denominator, but we are gonna just take the very standard approach where you use the same distribution. So Q is a distribution. QX is a probability measure, right? Distribution. Okay, so now what I can do in order to estimate this, now you, you remember, I wanna estimate this integral. Uh, the problem, you know, the whole, the, the whole problem 
is that I cannot compute, I cannot sample from pi and I cannot compute this analytically. So given that I cannot sample from pi, um, this kind of construction now um, with Qs in it is, is gonna allow me to build something numerical because I can sample from Q, right? So what you can do uh, is let's write separately. Um, so, I mean, this is just the Monte Carlo principle, right? If, if I have samples from Q, if we are uh, given samples, X, Y, I don't know what connotation I used. Okay, so I used the one that's harder to write by hand. So what's this? Um, Q with N. So once you're given these samples, what would you do? You would approximate, let's write it explicitly, your probability measure with a set of Dirac's, right? Um, so this is how it's denoted. So what this notation means, again, people who haven't seen this kind of thing, this is just this is just a pro, this is just a measure that makes sense against an integral. So it's just you can see that the definition of it is going to be given like this. Sorry, uh, it's going to be the other way around. X. Uh, sorry. So this is going to be x, and then this is going to be y. Um, so anyway, so the, the, the notation is if you integrate a function against this measure evaluated at its center, uh, the function will take that value, right? And then it only makes sense with an integral. OK, so what we will do then, we will plug our approximation. So we build our uh, approximate measure with our samples as a sum of Dirac's. And I'm going to plug that in into our important sampling estimator. So once I do that, I am going to build a sample based version, right? Because I'm now using samples. Okay, I'm going to use it to go down a bit. So that I have space. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug first this in here, right? And then it's gonna give me one over, again, it's gonna give me one over n, um, a summation of the samples and then uh, gamma xi, sorry, and then qxi. And then I'm going to normalize it with the same idea. Now the, the same, the, this integral in the denominator, right? It's just gonna be the ratio of gamma and q, right? So it's gonna be gamma xi and qxi. Okay, this is the important sampling estimate of this integral. Fine, so we can introduce some notation, right? We can use now a generic, we can define a generic weight function as it's called, an un unnormalized weight function this is. So if I define like this, and then I define further, you know, this is evaluated at i is denoted like this, right? Just to avoid writing things again and again. Um, you can see that this is basically the taking the shape of, so what these are canceling, this, this cancels. Um, so this, this basically takes the shape of, xi given the weights and you can see the, no, the normalizing uh, constant is just some the sum of the weights right so one of the things the smc or important sampler or the smc in the future will give you is that the sum of the weights will always be the normalizing constant right and you can further simplify this and write it as a weighted um, weighted sum of your you know, evaluation of the test function where uh, this weights, the small w, are basically the normalized w, right? So also you would see in the literature a lot of the, the notion of unnormalized weight, normalized weights, and so on, right? So these are the normalized weights, uh, these small ones, and then these are the unnormalized weights. Okay, so this is, so what did we do? So this is the, this is our estimate, right? So this, the whole thing, the sum over normalized weights and the evaluation of the test function is an estimation, um, is an approximation to the to the general thing, right? So one of the things, for example, again uh, to connect or to connect what Francesca will do is people are interested in this sort of error bound, for example, like you can have a pi of. So this is your you know original integral you wanted to estimate, and this is the sample based version. And for example, for the classical important sampling, we know that this sort of error bound holds, right? Again, I'm not going to go into this because this Francesca is going to explain a lot of this stuff. But uh, 
So th th this is so, sort of appealing because you know you have the so you would have the same rate if you were to able to you were able to sample IID from this pi. Uh, now you're not sampling from pi, but you, you're getting a scheme that get, has the same error guarantee, right? And then this sort of error guarantees will extend to SMC as well. Okay, so this is the attractive. Thing. Okay, now how do we connect each everything? Um, I'll maybe continue 10 more minutes and give a break, or is it? Uh, I guess it's okay. All right. So we built our important sampler and we built our state space model. So how we how would we then go on and um what is the relationship to a particle filter and dynamical systems and, and so on? So let's slowly introduce that. So what I'm going to do now is important sampling. Importance sampling for state space models, right? So these two ideas, I hope the space state space models and important sampling has been have been clear enough. You know, I try to keep it very simple. Um, so remember now, if you look at important sampling, uh, we had the notion of an unnormalized distribution, right? So we had a probability model that's defined over X and we had the notion of an unnormalized measure. We used it to define our weights and so on, right? So here, um, if you think about our X now, if you just map this X to X one to T, right? Let's say big T is our order. Let's keep it small as in nodes. So this is our path. Uh, you, can, you can see that the notion, corresponding notion of unnormalized distribution is nothing but the one that we mentioned earlier, right? This one, right? So now we are going to define an important sampler where our unnormalized measure is the unnormalized distribution of the state space model, right? Um, because we actually want to sample eventually compute expectations with respect to this distribution, right? So we, we want to define, in other words, we want to define an important sampler, importance uh, sampler for pi x zero to t given y one to t, right? And then we can remind ourselves that this is basically the um, sorry, uh, this is the unnormalized version. <clears throat> and this is the normalized version. Right? Okay. Um, so how would you do this? So I'm going to just basically uh, introduce. So, okay. If you remember what we did before, I can uh, try to write down in the same way, although this is not written in the notes. So you know, if I can maybe make a mistake, it is possible. So if you write this down, then um, uh, let's write this as an integral. Sorry, so if we write the same, so if we assume that we have a test function that is on, on the path, this is slightly unconventional way to introduce it, but just to introduce the weights, right, the notion of the weights, this would be basically the same idea as we had. Um, we would have an unnormalized distribution. Now I am going to introduce the proposal. Now the proposal, so, okay, uh, I haven't used the word I believe before. Okay, so let's go back. And so Q here, again, call the proposal, right? So that's a big, uh, big thing I forgot. Okay, so the Q here, this Q you sample from and you use the samples and you, you, you compute the weights with respect to is called the proposal, right? That's a, um, that's a very important notion, I guess, like that's one of the most used words. So in this in this case, you can you can think of this Q as you know you're proposing samples from Q. You Q is obviously not the actual target, and you do those you do something to those samples in the you know Metropolis Hastings and whatever case this would be except reject. In this case, you reweight them, right? So you compute weights of them. So that you you draw propose you draw samples from the proposal, and then you compute some associated weights to them so that you know the, the estimate rebuild you know satisfies some some nice properties like, like these ones. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to introduce the same 
uh, kind of notion, divide and multiply with Q, right? Q X zero T, Q X zero T and D X zero T, right? And then I'm going to divide by, you know, again, the same, like the same, uh, I'm not gonna write this actually. Okay, so it's the, anyway, let's write in the interest of completeness. Divide by Q zero T times Q zero T, DX zero T. Okay, so where are the weights here, right? You can see the weight expression, the function. So the function previously was gamma, which is unnormalized measure over Q, which is proposal, right? So we, are, we, have an, we have an equivalent notion of weights here on the entire space, which is this function, right? Okay, so, so one of the key notions here, or one of the key ideas we are going to use is this structure of this weight function. So we, we, have, to, we have to look into this weight function in detail, right? We will, this will be an important bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to denote this weight function as with this zero to T notation, right? And this basically shows, uh, basically it, it, it is about um, whether these weights are defined for the entire path or not, right? So this is the weight for the entire path and it would be given by something like this, right? All right, okay. Uh, and then, so given that, for example, let's like very simply again, I'm not going to derive uh, the important sample again, but let's say you have an, you have a sample. So how would you do an important sampling for state space models like a crude one, right? The crude one would be you sample from zero to T, Q zero to T, right? Like uh, just like as in the previous case, in the important sampling, you sample from proposal and samples. And you would compute your weights. So let's let's uh, let's make the structure emerge a bit so that you know later um, we can. So this is IS four. And you know we you would sample. So this is the first step, and you would then use the compute weights, or let's say just weights. So these are computing the weights. So where, what are the weights here? The weights here would be, first of all, the, the step would be you norm, you compute the normalized weight. Let's denote it again with small t. That would be the evaluation of this weight function and the sum of it, right? So why did we do this? Uh, this is the same as what we did here. Yeah, right. Um, so you can see that here again. Um, it pointed. So these are the unnormalized weights. Uh, these are evaluated. So what was this function? This function was given like this, right? So this is the unnormalized gamma over the proposal. So and then you normalize your weights. So so the over the path space things follow in a similar way. It's just you know everything is defined on on x zero to t instead of x t or x in this case. Okay, and then what would you do? So you are given samples and you are given your, you are given your um, weights, the posterior probability measure, the approximation of it, um, let's denote it. So I'm going to write, so this is the same as writing X zero to T, D X zero to T, right? It's uh, just, uh, oh, okay, I don't have weights here, so I don't have one over N. The approximation of your posterior probability measure would be given by. One this. second, as we have a question. Yeah. Question: The summation in the weights, uh, the determinant of the weight over the index i. This summation, yes. Yeah, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So the approximation of the probability measure would be. I'm just going to finish this, and maybe there are more questions. Right. Approximation would be given like this. So this is the approximate probability measure you would build using your importance weights and samples. Okay, um, this may be a, a nice place to take a break maybe because I'm going to now introduce all a whole lot, a lot of machinery. Um, but if there are any questions, I, I'm happy to take them or, or we can take a 10 minutes break and maybe do a longer session so I finish all of the stuff I need to do. I'm um, just going to scan the room for questions. 
Okay, please do go for it. Everyone seems pretty happy, Dennis. So maybe we'll uh, break okay. the 10. I'll leave, okay, I'll leave the call on and then uh, we yes, can yes, that's fine. That 10. That's fine. That's Terrific. fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.